In this tutorial, we'll be connecting an Arduino Uno to a 16x2 LCD. The 16x2 LCD has its name because it has 16 columns and 2 rows. There's lots of other combinations available like the 8x1, 8x2, 10x2, 16x1, but the most common use is a 16x2. The module has 16 input pins. Going from left to right, the first is VSS or ground. The second is VDD, which is the power input at 5 volts. The third is VE, which is the contrast control. The fourth is the register select, which helps the microcontroller to shift between command and data registers. The fifth is read or write, which is used to read or write. It's normally grounded when writing to the LCD. The sixth is the enable pin, which is connected to the microcontroller pin and toggled between 1 and 0 for data acknowledgement. The next eight pins are data pins. They're connected to a microcontroller to send 8-bit data. The LCDs also operate in 4-bit mode. Pin 15 is LED positive, which is the power pin for the backlight. Pin 16 is LED negative, which is the ground pin for the backlight. So now I'm going to solder the pin header onto the module. Just remember to be careful because soldering irons are dangerous when they're hot. Once it's soldered, I just place it in a breadboard so I can easily connect pins to it. We're going to use the Arduino Uno, a 2x16 LCD display, and a potentiometer. This is the wiring diagram I'm going to follow. It includes a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, which we'll use to vary the contrast on the screen. Once I place the potentiometer into the breadboard, I connect a jumper from the ground pin on the potentiometer to the ground pin on the LCD monitor. I then link the ground pin to the read or write pin. And then I link these ground pins to the backlight ground. Finally, I link all these pins back to the ground pin on the Arduino Uno. Next, I power the board by connecting a jumper cable from the 5 volt pin to the backlight power input. Link pin 15, which is the LED power input, to pin 2, which is VDD, the 5 volt input to the LCD board. The 5 volt supply is also linked to the opposite end of the potentiometer. The centre pin on the potentiometer is then linked back to pin 3 on the LCD board. This is to vary the contrast or brightness of the board. Pin 4 on the LCD module connects to pin 12 on the Arduino. This is for the register select and allows the microcontroller to shift between the command or data registers. Pin 6 on the LCD is connected to pin 11. This is the enable pin. This is used for data acknowledgements. Finally, we connect the data pins. I'm operating my LCD in a 4-bit mode and using data pins 4, 5, 6 and 7. Once all the jumper cables are in, you can power up your Arduino. Now it's time to vary the contrast or brightness by adjusting the potentiometer in the circuit. Once you're happy with the visibility, you can open the Arduino IDE and open one of the example sketches. Go to File, Example, Liquid Crystal and Hello World. I'm going to explain this code to you. Constant integers are declared to mark the pins used. D4, 5, 6 and 7 are the data pins. EN is enable and RS is register select. Next, an object from the library has been instantiated passing through the pin numbers. In the setup loop, the begin function of this instance is used to finding the coordinates of the LCD. The LCD print function is called in hello world to the LCD. In the main loop, I'm going to comment everything out because in this example, it sets a timer to print on every second, which I don't need. 
And there you go. Hello, world. Now let's look at the scroll example. Go back to File, Examples, Liquid Crystal, and the scroll example. In this example, it begins the same way. The Liquid Crystal library is called, the pins are declared, and the object is instantiated. In the main loop, when the begin function is called, the coordinates are given. The world is printed to the LCD. This is followed by a one second delay. In the main loop, we have three for loops. The first, an integer is declared called position counter, which counts up to 12, it says less than 13. Each increment, the LCD scrolls to the left before sleeping for 150 milliseconds. In the second for loop, the position counter integer is redeclared as zero, and on each increment up to 28, as it says less than 29, the LCD scrolls to the right before sleeping for 150 milliseconds. And in the final for loop, the position counter is redeclared again, but this time it only increments to 15, as it says less than 16, and on each increment the LCD scrolls to the left again before sleeping for 150 milliseconds. After finishing the three for loops, the Arduino sleeps for one second. I like to change each one of these delays in the for loop to 250 milliseconds. The reason for this is that it scrolls too fast and you cannot read it. And there you have it. Now it's time for you to give it a go yourself before we move on to the next example. For the next example, go back to File, Examples, Liquid Crystal, and serial display. The beginning of this script is the same, except in the setup loop, we're going to begin serial communications between the Arduino and the computer over USB UART. In the main loop, what's happening is the Arduino is waiting for characters to arrive over the serial communications from a laptop. On arrival, the LCD screen is cleared and each character is printed to the LCD. We can now upload the program to the Arduino. I open the serial monitor and type hi there into the entry box before hitting carriage return or enter. This transmits the characters to the Arduino and displays them on the LCD. Let's try again. How are you? And finally, you're watching the LCD tutorial from Mishmash Labs. On to our final example of this tutorial. Go back to File, Examples, Liquid Crystal, and Text Direction, where we vary the direction of the text on the LCD. Once again, the start is the same. The library is included, the integers are declared, and the Liquid Crystal object is instantiated. One other integer called this char or character is also declared. In the setup loop, we see that the LCD cursor is switched on with the function cursor. To the main loop, this first if statement reverses the direction of the characters after the letter M. I'm going to change this M to O because it fits better on my LCD. What happens here is once O is read, the LCD will begin to print to the left. I'm going to comment out this middle section which is another if statement that changes the direction for, again at S. I don't need this as I have enough space and I only want it to change once. In this third if statement, if the character is Z, the LCD returns to home and this character is set back to A to reset it. On each loop of the program, the character is written to the LCD before the microcontroller goes to sleep for one second and finally this character is incremented up a letter. Let's upload the sketch and try it out. And there's another tutorial complete. I really hope you've found this video useful. Get acquainted with these libraries by giving it a go yourself. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and share. Gura Mila from all of Mishmash Labs.